Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa. We're going to continue learning about beetles today. We're gonna to learn about a specific beetle called a dung beetle. And the story today is called Behold the Beautiful Dung Beetle, written by Cheryl Bardot and illustrated by Alan Marks. Somewhere in the world, right now, an animal is lightening its load. In your backyard? On a nearby farm? In a forest? On a grassland far away? Animals take nutrients from the food they eat. Then, after their food is digested, they push waste out in the form of dung, also called feces or poop. Nearby, antennae detect the scent of dung in the breeze. One animal's waste is the dung beetle's treasure. Dung beetles act fast when they sense the presence of dung. Protective top wings called elytra pop up. Broad flight wings frantically flap. Beetles race to the dung by the thousands. The first may arrive 15 seconds after the dropping plops to the ground. For these beetles, dung is a precious pile of food and drink. Bacteria live in the water that dampens dung, filling this fluid with protein and nutrients. Dung beetles use their paddle-like jaws to squeeze these rich juices out of the dung and into their bellies. The dung provides all the water and nourishment they need. All dung beetles scramble to get a piece of dung pat pie fresh from the oven, but each of the three types of dung beetles has a different way of enjoying the poop. Dwellers dig right in. Dwellers hurry to eat their fill before the feces that cause the fuss dry out or disappear. Rollers push perfect spheres of dung away from the throng. Rollers eat as they work their jaws and legs moving nonstop to sculpt awkward clumps of dung into smooth spinning balls. Then they balance upside down on stout front legs and use their back legs to steer the balls away from the dung pat. They want this dung all for themselves. The largest rollers, which are about the size of tennis balls, can roll dung balls up to 50 times heavier than themselves. Wow, that's amazing. Tunnelers hoard their treasures directly below the dung pat. Tunnelers also eat as they work, stashing as much dung as possible in burrows beneath the dung pat. Females do the digging and make hundreds of trips to transport the dung deep underground. Males bring the females more dung and guard the entrance to their stockpiles against intruders. Competition can be fierce. Rollers engage in head-to-head -head combat to defend their dung and for the promise of finding a mate. Male rollers knock legs and heads to become king of the dung mountain. Winners attract mates while losers flail on bulky backs. Tunnelers push and pry and twist and turn in underground battles. Male tunnelers tussle to keep a burrow along with the female and the dung stored inside. The bigger beetles with larger horns usually force smaller beetles out of nests and away from dung supplies. Females who spend most of their time making nests have either small horns or none at all. Dwellers scuffle to keep their seats at the table while the dung lasts. Dwellers feast on the dung pat even as others try to carry or stow it away, but they don't fight to defend it. Being less choosy about the freshness of their dung, many dwellers simply remain at the buffet longer than other dung beetles. At mating, they lay their eggs right in the dung. Champions reap rewards. Male rollers speed away with a ball of dung and a female. Female rollers skitter along behind the dung ball, help pull it, or catch a ride on it. When the rollers find soft soil in a selected spot, they bury the dung. Some rollers divide their day's earnings into several brood balls, while some make only one. 
After mating, the female lays a single egg inside each brood ball. The male moves on to find his next banquet, while the female hovers close, cleaning harmful mold off each brood ball before it can reach the precious egg inside. Tunnelers mate and stash their eggs deep inside underground vaults. Tunnelers may create up to 50 brood balls in the tunnels of their burrow. Most lay one egg for each brood ball. Some stick around, eating extra dung from their stockpiles while tending their brood balls. Others seal the nest with soil and then depart watching and waiting for their next meal to fall. The dung was once unwanted waste. Now it is fuel for new life. Buried dung enriches the soil. Plants draw nutrients from the dung into their roots, stems, leaves, flowers, and fruits. The dung will also supply nourishment for the beetle's offspring. Eventually, grubs hatch out of the eggs. They eat and eat and grow and grow. Young beetles, called grubs, have enormous appetites. Roller and tunneler grubs hollow their brood balls. Dweller grubs eat dried up dung that adult beetles left behind. Later, as adults, the beetles will dodge birds, bats, and reptiles as they search for their next meal. But for now, whether above ground or below, the grubs are nestled in dung, which repels most predators. One day, the grubs stop eating and turn their energy inward. Their bodies transform. As a grub grows, its protective outer covering, called an exoskeleton, becomes tight and must be shed. After this has occurred several times, the grub becomes a pupa. From the outside, the pupa appears to rest. Inside, its legs, body, and head reshape themselves. When done, the pupa sheds its exoskeleton one last time and emerges as an adult. Just as butterflies emerge with wet, crumpled wings, adult dung beetles first appear as soft, pale shadows of their true selves. Little by little, they begin to shine. Brand new adult beetles are fragile. They remain safe in the dung until their elytra harden into shiny armor. Clad in splendor, dung beetles ascend into our world. They are ancient symbols of life and renewal. Ancient Egyptians were impressed with dung beetles, which they called scarabs. The orbs of dung that were rolled across the earth and buried reminded them of the sun traveling across the sky and setting into the horizon. Adult beetles crawling from the buried dung reminded them of the sun being reborn each morning. Behold, the beautiful dung beetle. Let's take a closer look at the dung beetle. Do you see its antennae rods? Those antennae rods in the front help the dung beetles smell. They have a strong sense of smell. If you look at their head, it's shovel shaped, which helps with their digging. If you look at their scalloped scoopers, those are also made so that they can dig. And then they have a thick round body. All right, my friends, are you ready? All right, little scientists, are you ready to do an art project with me? All right, my little scientists, we are going to draw a stag beetle. I'm going to take you through uh, drawing the stag beetle, but um, remember, if you want to pause or stop the video to catch up, uh, please do so. So um, you're going to want your paper long ways, vertically, up and down. And I'm going to use a Sharpie just so you can see it better. Sometimes um, if I use pencil, it'll be too light on the paper but um, you can use pencil first. I always do sketch in pencil. And then um, you can use a Sharpie on top or a black marker. So you're gonna start at the top of your paper and draw kind of like a 
smiley face. And then from there, you're going to draw the, what are called sometimes antlers or it's pinchers right there. And we're gonna make kind of wave shapes for its pincher. Now remember that a stag beetle is symmetrical. You can actually even see a line. If you draw a line right in the middle, what's on the left side is the same as what's on the right side. Three legs on each side, one antenna, one little pincher on each side, right? So do you see these? We're gonna draw these little ones right here. All right, now we're gonna start on the head. And we're gonna do two ovals here for the eye. And if you wanna leave a little bit of white there, you can color in the rest of the eye. All right. Now right here, you're gonna go just a little bit around the eyes right there. Are you with me so far? All right. Now we're gonna go out this way a little bit on each side. And we're gonna draw the bottom of the stag beetle's head. We're gonna put a little curve here and a little curve here. And then we're gonna come back here and curve down a little bit. All right, are you with me? All right, then we're gonna do a little curve line here. All right. Now we need the antennae on each side. So we're gonna put one out here and one out here. And then a little bit of a curve line back that way. And then it's got little hairs. like that. All right, now we're going to do the thorax. That's the second part of an insect's body, right? So you're gonna do curved out on both sides. And a little curve here. And a little curve here. So the three parts of the body for a stag beetle are the head, the thorax, and then the abdomen, which is the biggest part. So make sure you curve back in there, and then we're gonna connect them. All right, so you've got your head, your thorax, and now we're gonna start our abdomen. But before that, we're gonna have a little part right here that connects. And now, the big abdomen. Okay, so draw a line right there. That's gonna be the top of the abdomen. It's gonna go right under, but at the same width as the thorax. And now we're gonna curve down. We're getting ready for the big abdomen. All right, are you with me?
Now here are the wing cases. So we're gonna put that a line down the middle. Now we need legs. Do you remember how many legs an insect has? That's right, six legs. So first we're going to come here and make a little half circle or backwards C. And then this is where the first leg comes out. And same here, I'm gonna move our little stag beetle. All right, so you've got one on each side. Now we're gonna get our next one. Oh. Now we're gonna make this a little thicker, right? Because if you look at the leg, you need a little, another line to make it a little thicker like that. And then you're gonna do the other side the same way. And then there's little hooks at the end. Do you see that? So we're gonna do little hooks, kind of like a W. All okay, now we're gonna do the middle legs. And then again, we're gonna make it a little thicker. And then our little V, I mean our little W our little W. Okay, now we're gonna do the last set of legs. Now we're gonna do the last set of legs. gonna make the half circle there or upside down or backwards C. We're gonna go out, in, and down, and out, in, and down. i make this one a little longer. And then we're gonna make the legs a little thicker. Don't forget it's little claws. And there you have it. I can't wait to see how yours turn out. Remember to send me a picture. And now if you'd like, you can also use oil pastels 
or markers or crayons to color it. Have fun! Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.